like there's no tomorrow. Welcome everyone after the break. Um, in the first block we discussed uh, concepts like uh, interest rate swaps, uh, FRA contracts or floating rate nodes. Today we move uh, forward, we move uh, not forward in the pricing measure, but we move forward in the content of today's lecture. Uh, we are going to focus on the pricing of uh, derivatives that involve volatility. To get to the pricing of uh, caplets, floorlets, etc., we also need to discuss the concept of measure changes for interest rates. In particular, we will discuss the measure change for the full white model using not as we have done in the lecture number two, where we concentrated on uh, imposing martingality and using that properties to find out the measure change. Today we will use directly the measure change concept, so we will derive the rodom nicodem derivative, we will apply the Girzanov theorem, and then from there we will conclude the measure changes. So this will be also insightful for you how to perform measure changes where you cannot directly impose the martingality condition. So today we concentrate on uh, four uh, main subjects. We have a full white under T forward measure, pricing of uh, options uh, uh, on zero coupon bonds, so the underlying asset is a uh, zero coupon bond. We will price also couplets and floorlets, and then we move to pricing of couplets and floorlets under the whole white model. We will wrap up with uh, a summary and also two exercises that are given us your homework. Enjoy! In this course, we have talked a lot about the stochastic interest rate, short rate models, uh, and also how we could evaluate swaps, etc. But we never discussed the, the dynamics of a zero coupon bond. So you remember that we have, of course, a zero coupon bond. Already I have repeated it many times under risk neutral measures. So we have a bond PTT is defined as an expectation. And then we have a minus integral from T to T, R, S, D, S. And this is condition on T. Okay, so this is, we know how we can, we can calculate using short rate. We can also do it with uh, uh, a fine uh, jump diffusion models where we know the analytical expression for this uh, expectation. However, we also see that we have two arguments. We have a, a small time t here, so indicating today's date or the date at which the zero coupon bond is observed. And also we have maturity. But of course, what we can also do, we can look at the dynamics of this bond. So this is... Uh, something we haven't looked so far. And actually what is interesting is that actually we can find this dynamics using the AJM framework uh, and using instantaneous forward rate, which we have already discussed in lecture number three. So this is uh, the, the objective. We would like to find the dynamics of a zero coupon bond. Later, we would like to change this dynamics from a risk neutral measure to a, a forward measure. And later we will use these properties of those zero coupon bonds under different measures to price options on those bonds. So we move uh, away from linear products. Linear products are the products which value or expectation. We always see a linear combination of observables that we always talk about linear products. And then we move to optionalities. So if you have a maximum, minimum, square, and so on, those are non-linear products. So this is important to keep in mind. Uh, if a product is implied from a yield curve, that's considered to be linear in uh, observable uh, assets. Okay, so what we do first, we will look at the definition of the instantaneous forward rate. We already have seen it in lecture number two. It's a minus partial derivative of the uh, log of a zero coupon bond. Okay, we have this zero here. It is actually, we can also, this zero can be at uh, any time. Yeah? So here we could have a small time t, and this will be also here. Okay, uh, so from this equation, we know that the zero coupon bond is directly related to the instantaneous forward rate. And this is essentially this transformation. So if we differentiate, if we integrate both sides of this equation, take an exponent, then we see this relation here. So next, what we see is that uh, um, this instantaneous forward rate that we see here on the integral of it, uh, this is also defined by the AJM framework. We already have seen it, that uh, a, the conditions for the AJM uh, model, so the instantaneous forward rate, what are the conditions such that this uh, dynamics is arbitrage free. And from here, we can actually set this ZTT to this whole integral as we have here. So um, again, what we do next, we apply Ito's lemma. We always apply Ito's lemma if we have a function of a stochastic quantity. So then if we apply it, then we see the following relation. So we have a D, so it's actually we divided both sides by a PTT. 
So if the dynamics of a zero coupon bond divided by PTD, so also this bond could be also here and here, doesn't really matter. And we have a dynamics of uh, uh, Z, so dynamics of this uh, um, integral, plus we have a half of a squared of a DZ squared. So this comes from Ito's lem. Okay, uh, and if we uh, just substitute the dynamics from the AJM, so the dynamics for F, so if you see here, we have this dynamics for F, which is the instantaneous forward rate. If we substitute for, for this integral and if we put here in this uh, uh, DZ and also here, then we end up with the following uh, expression. If you like, I, I would like, I wanted to skip some details, steps in between. If you are interested in the, uh, those steps, I recommend to go into book. Here, this is the, I would like to present only the, the final results after those uh, few intermediate steps. But what is important is that we have this uh, uh, dynamics of a zero coupon bond is expressed as the RT. So remember, RT is the FTT. So it's the instantaneous forward rate exactly at the maturity equals to the time when we observe that rate. So this is this. You have a zero coupon bond DT. So this is a drift. And then we have a minus zero coupon bond. And here we have this integral over the volatility from the AJM. And the volatility of AJM, for example, for whole white model, uh, it is given of this form. So we can always substitute and calculate this integral. So under the whole white model, the dynamics of a, uh, uh, the dynamics of the zero coupon bond under the whole white model, it is simply you see it is uh, PTT over PTT, so small t capital T. So uh, dynamics over uh, with time t with the maturity at capital time t we have a short rate dt and then we have this uh, additional volatility term which is also expressed in the mean in terms of mean reversion and also we have this volatility for the short rate i think for the before we use the volatility coefficient sigma for the short rate for the whole white uh, but this is we, here i just switched to to eta i think should not be confusing um what is important is that, okay, this BTT, it is just a time-dependent function, so there's nothing special there. We have a constant eta. So if we, then we see actually this dynamics of a, a zero coupon bond for the uh, full white model, the solution for this uh, stochastic differential equation, it's uh, just kind of geometric Brownian motion, it's log normal. This comes from the fact that if we have an integral over normally distributed process, the summation of it is still normal distributed, and the zero coupon bond is essentially an exponent of that. So then we have a log normality. And we can also see it here that this log normality is still here, especially because the volatility is uh, time dependent. Here we have a normal, and here is a, you see that this PT that which we divided is actually make makes sure that we have an exponential form for the zero coupon bond. Okay, uh, next step so we have the uh, we have the found we have found the dynamics of the uh, zero coupon bond. Uh, next step is to find out what is the dynamics of that bond under the T forward measure. Um, we already have discussed how to change measure. Um, I would like to here only stress that a change of measure is particularly important if we talk about uh, stochastic discounting. Is when uh, um, when we have, for example, an asset and we use a stochastic discounting then in order to solve the expectation, so if we have a payoff which involves uh, stochastic discount, so it's an E minus integral over T, T, R, S, D, S, and we have some payoff, for example, to be H, which depends, let's say, on a stock at the maturity, then in order to find this expectation, we would essentially need to have a joint distribution between this integral and S, T. So this is, as you can imagine, uh, it is much more difficult uh, than if somebody would ask you to derive uh, expectation of H, S, T, where you don't really depend on a second dimension. Here, the complexity is, of course, that you are not only depending on S, R, S, but you, are, you need to have a distribution of the whole integral. So that makes it more uh, complicated. Of course, you should be able to find this distribution, because especially in the case when R, S is uh, normally distributed, then you know we know also the distribution for exponent of it so you very likely will be able to find this uh, solution however uh, by changing of measures you can reduce this second second integral that you would have because if you have this expectation then essentially to find this uh, expression you will need to have a double integral over the joint density of this integral and st and that can be avoided if you change measure 
and you would go from a risk neutral, so let me stress it's risk neutral, to the expectation T measure. Actually, it should be, we should have already zero coupon bond here, P, T, T. And we have an expectation under the T measure of our H, S, T. We only need to make sure that the dynamics for ST is given under this measure, right? So this is the key point. And then this expectation can be solved at the, as the single integral of uh, over ST. Uh, of course, uh, only if this, after the measure change, the dynamics of ST, it will not become more complicated than we had here. So this is the assumption. So this is typically why we deal with rather simplified models for interest rates if we want to really uh, benefit from that. Okay, let's take a look here. So uh, what we'll do first, uh, in a lecture number two, we discuss different measure changes and how to switch between uh, uh, what is the difference between Q measure, T measure, stock measure, etc. Uh, here we will attack this problem from a slightly different perspective. We will, go uh, we will use directly the Girzanov theorem and the radom nikodym derivative. So radom nikodym derivative is given as the lambda, and we have a ratio of two uh, measures, so it's a dqt and dq. Uh, I always consider this if you if you if you're not if you don't remember this this random nicotine you should always write denominator you write a measure that you want to change from and then nominator you measure you want to change to. Then we have here like I already discussed before we have a bond at a later date divided by bond at the initial point and then we have a and then we have opposite so the bond and the money savings account initial divided by uh, money savings account at time t. What is the next step? Is to find the dynamics of this radom nicodym derivative. So we basically apply ETO to this expression. So we apply ETO and then we need to find this dynamics. You see that actually if you want to find this dynamics for lambda for the radom nicodym derivative, we also need to have dynamics of zero coupon bond, but that we have just derived. So that's uh, good to have. And for MT, we also know that MT is given that by mt is simply equal to r t m t t t. So this is also expression that we have given. Okay, so uh, if we apply this uh, uh, Ito's lemma to lambda, this is the, what expression we have. After simplifying, after substitution, the dynamics for the zero coupon bond and the dynamics for the uh, money savings account, uh, many things will uh, cancel out. And this is the expression uh, what you arrive. And here, actually, if we look at the time t, so if we uh, actually so what we can see, we can uh, we have this money savings account mt0 over mt0t, and then we have a pt mt. So this term also resembles you see here. This is exactly the same term as here. So this is actually equal to lambda. This is lambda t. So this means that we can divide this equation by lambda t, and this is what we have. So we have d lambda t over lambda t, and we arrive only at this volatility term times br, which is deterministic function of time, rt. So this is our uh, this is our uh, Girzanov. This is dynamics of the uh, of the radom nikodym derivative, and from here we can conclude what is the Girzanov kernel. So this this term here that we have. It represents what is exactly the measure change. Before in this experiment in a section in a section in lecture two, we have essentially found what is the Girzanov kernel by imposing some martingality properties. In this case, if we directly apply a rodom nicodym derivative and we apply the Girzanov transformation, we already know from this dynamics of lambda what is exactly the Girzanov kernel. And from here, we conclude immediately, so by using the Girzanov theorem, that this is the measure transformation we are interested in. And this actually, this is the, uh, by this step, we find the measure transformation. So this is what the uh, Girzanov theorem tells us. So it's a, a relation between T forward measure and risk neutral measure. And this is the extra drift that we have if you like to switch between different measures. So if we know that relation, what we can also do, we can then just directly apply that to our dynamics of the whole white model. So we have a, uh, um, here, the, the, this is the Brownian motion under risk neutral measure. Then we can substitute this Brownian motion with a Brownian motion, so this one, so it'll be plus. So this term will go on the other side, right, with a plus. Then we can substitute 
and this is what we will get. So under the t forward measure, short rate model is given by lambda, and we have again we have this theta function. We have some time dependent function here, which now which depends also on the maturity. You see, so this t here corresponds to this t here uh, minus rt. So it's very much alike what we have seen before. And here, what we can do, we can define new theta with the two arguments. See, this, this is this function, uh, small t capital M t, and then this theta. Uh, hat t is just defined in this way, and b is this given here. So in this way, what we have accomplished, we have managed to find out the, what is the Gerson of uh, what is the first random Nikodian derivative for measure change. We found the dynamics using AJM of the zero coupon bond under the Hull-White model, and then we applied a Gerson of transformation of measure change to change the measure for the Hull-White model from a risk neutral measure to the T forward measure. So this is what we have accomplished in this, uh, in this section. Since we have now learned how to change measure in the interest rate world, how to define the random Nikodim derivative, and also how to uh, apply Gerson of theorem to change measure from risk neutral to the forward measure, now let's take a look at the pricing problem. So in this uh, uh, block, in this section, we will be focusing on pricing an option on a zero coupon bond. So we have uh, uh, two times, we have time t and time uh, s, so this is maturity, and time t will be our expiry. So if we have uh, an option <clears throat> on a zero coupon bond, we have uh, alpha, which is uh, one or minus one, depending whether we have a call or put option. We have a zero coupon bond with a T, which I call it expire because the option will expire at time capital time T. And then we have a maturity of the underlying zero coupon bond is at time TS. So this is our payoff. And of course, now we also, if this is a payoff, we discount it to today with a money savings account T0 over uh, capital time T. So um, first step to do is already what we have discussed in the stochastic discounting problem. We change measure from uh, uh, look at the money savings account so from risk neutral measure to zero coupon bond measure uh, uh, zero coupon bond with the maturity of capital time t and this is what we have so we have a, a zero coupon bond so it's a, a constant basically at time uh, t zero we have expectation under the t forward measure and then we have a maximum so of course now we need to know what is the dynamics of the zero coupon bond what is the distribution of the zero coupon bond under this t forward measure. Okay, so what we can do next uh, is that we know that under uh, full white model, and full white model has a fine form we can express in terms of a and b. So zero coupon bond, as we have uh, uh, discussed, so we have zero coupon bond p uh, t t s. It will be defined as e a. We have here tau plus b tau times r capital time t and tau is defined as tau it is um, capital time to be t s minus t actually yes let me double check we have a t s is the maturity of the bond t is the expiry so we have a t s minus t so and this form we know it already from previous lectures once we talk about uh, affinity of a full white model so okay so what we do we know that there is a zero coupon bond so we can substitute uh, for the zero coupon bond this expression so this is what we have uh, we also recognize that some of these elements are deterministic so for example the stochasticity here is only in this rt right so this expression e to power a it is we can take it outside of the uh, maximum essentially also outside even from expectation but then if we take it outside here of this bracket we also need to adjust our k this k will be you see we have a k hat which is also adjusted with this constant uh, time dependent function a over but this is all slightly simplified because we don't need to have it this a here it's better to have it always outside of the expectation <clears throat> and then we all only look at this uh, stochastic part with uh, r okay so this is the expression we have we also know the distribution for rt but now we need to know the distribution of a, a process r under this measure so this is this is something we have already derived before uh, yeah so this is the, the the key element here that we cannot just simulate paths or use distribution 
under the risk neutral measure Q, we need to substitute, we need to use the distribution, which is for the full white model, under the new measure, under the T for what measure. And this is what we have. So uh, what maybe here, it is important, you see that we have this function A and beta and B, and now we also have to, we have the solutions for A and B. So we know those functions are here, and now we need to know the distribution of R uh, under the T for what measure. And this is actually, so uh, I would like to skip uh, the intermediate steps of these derivations because as you can imagine, it's about a lengthy um, derivation. But maybe what you can, uh, how you can think about the solution of this expectation is as follows. This expectation uh, of a maximum e to power b times r minus k, this part you can think of, k okay, since rt, even under the new measure, it is uh, normally distributed with some time-dependent parameters, then this whole expression, it's log normally distributed. And if it's log normally distributed, essentially if all this expectation, you can just solve it as we would solve Black-Scholes model with a slightly adjusted parameters. And this is exactly what all this derivation takes place. You see also here, we have this A, which is very much alike what we have seen in the Black-Scholes model. We also have D1, D2. But what is most important is that once you have a, a Hull white model or normally distributed Hull white model, you know how to change the measure, then the pricing of a zero coupon bond is performed analytically. We have this exponent here, and this is just analytical expression using normal CDFs uh, with a D1, D2. Everything is just, uh, everything is given in closed form. Uh, what is important here is that because we use uh, in the derivations, you will see that we are relying this function mu and v, actually it's a mu, which depends on a theta hat function. And this is taken from the properties of this R process, the short ray process, which we've changed measure. So uh, before for full white under risk neutral measure, we had theta. Uh, once we change to the T forward measure, then this theta becomes uh, theta hat. So you see now, if you look at the uh, moments, uh, and mu here, uh, then we also need to use this uh, a new dynamics for the process, the dynamics which is defined under the T forward measure. Um, now it's a time for experiment. So in this experiment, we will perform pricing of a zero coupon bond. And so we have just a bond we have seen a few seconds ago, and we will discount with the, uh, we have here the also full white model. So everything is under whole white model. The objective here is to uh, check our an analytical expression. So this expression we have seen, we have derived here against Monte Carlo simulation, uh, just uh, standard Euler discretization. Let's take a look at the code. So in the code here, uh, we have, uh, of course, standard settings for the uh, yield curve for interpolation. Uh, also standard what we have already discussed before checking whether the zero coupon bonds from the full white model and the market are the same. So this is, we are not going to discuss it more. Now we have a setting where we have a configuration for the new zero coupon bond. So we consider a bond uh, which will, uh, the option essentially, which will expire in four years. And then the maturity of a bond is eight years. Um, we have to simulate our Euler discretization. We have to do only the simulation until time T1 in four years because we then we use the affine form of the zero coupon bond. So those are the paths. We take R from those paths. Those paths are just simple Euler discretization. So there is nothing particular uh, worth discussing. So once we have paths, we uh, calculate money savings account everywhere. Uh, this is this part where I'm calculating here. You see, I'm doing this exponent cumulative summation. Uh, this part, it uh, maybe is not the best here place what I have done. Uh, ideal, you would like to maybe use this discounting in the function where you use also the simulation of the rates. They're in a basically in one iteration, in one for loop, which is already there. You can just add this extra factor that will be computationally maybe more efficient. And now we look at the um, option pricing part. So here I'm defining zero coupon bond <clears throat> because zero coupon bond does not really depend on any strike. It is just a, a stochastic quantity that we can just pre-compute. You see, I'm using this uh, zero coupon bond function. So the function which takes A and B, which calculates A and B for different sets of parameters. And the input is also this R at the end. So it's R at year four. <clears throat> then we have the zero coupon bond. 
And here, simply what we do, we just calculate uh, option price of a zero uh, maximum you see on a zero coupon bond minus strike. We will vary number uh, various strikes. For, so for different strikes, you calculate this expectation. And then in the final point here, what we do, we compare the, we actually here, we compute the expression, uh, the analytical expression we have, I have just shown in the slides. It, it is this code here. So it's a very simple form. We have A and B. We have a mu and variance, so those are also in closed forms. We have adjusted strike k, uh, this function a, which was also in the slides, and then we evaluate. This is the basically the pricing equation for the. Uh, actually, this is here the pricing equation for a option European type of option on a zero coupon bond, and at the end we just plot both results. So let's take uh, let's wait for a moment. Okay, so I have generated here. 20,000 paths and 1,000 time steps. So, of course, this is the reason why we had to uh, wait a bit. So, in the first graph, of course, is this double checking the errors. And here on the bottom figure, uh, we can see Monte Carlo results for option pricing on a zero coupon bond versus theoretical one. And the theoretical one is the one we have just derived in the slides. So, you see, there is a perfect alignment. Uh, why the zero coupon bond pricing is so much important is because it's actually closely linked to the pricing of uh, uh, caplets and flow rates. So pricing not only on a zero options on zero coupon bond, but also pricing of options uh, where the underlying is the forward LIBOR rate. And the next block, this will be um, clear. What is the link between options on a zero coupon bond and options on a caplet on a flow rate? The next subject of today's lecture is the subject on pricing of couplets and floorlets. Uh, couplets and floorlets are just simple type of European type option on the interest rate, uh, which is the forward LIBOR rate. So in terms of a couplet, we have a maximum a LIBOR rate minus strike K. And then if we look at uh, uh, a floorlet, we have a type of a put option. You can see it's a strike minus the LIBOR rate. Um, and both of the cases we have a payment, so we see this. There is an evaluation at the TK minus one. However, the payment of this option takes place at time TK, which is expressed here. So this is the a pay of valuation. In both cases, we multiply the value of an option. So this is again, uh, as we have seen before, we also need to take approval into account because this is basically a rate. We are looking at a rate. We multiply with the notional to get a fraction, a part of that notional and we adjust to the accruing period over which this rate was computed. So those are like, a, uh, if you're familiar with U uh, European call and put options, is basically the same, except that uh, the naming is slightly different. Caplet corresponds to the, uh, a call option, and floorlet corresponds to the a put option. Uh, in this block, we will discuss pricing of these uh, 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 options, these European type options. And we'll be looking at two aspects. The one aspect, when we use once we use uh, uh, approach we have seen already in a previous block, thus uh, some uh, pricing it as it is done for a zero coupon bond based on a full light model. And a second approach, I will show you how this can be done by directly imposing a distribution or a stochastic process on this LIBOR rate. So this is the two approaches that we are going to discuss. Um, similarly, so this is a little bit of description of exactly where the reset takes place and when is the payment date. But this is already what we have seen before. So if we have a time, we are at time t here. We have a ti minus one with time ti. We are observing this rate, which is resetting at time ti minus one, or in, actually I'm using tk minus one and the rate we paid at this point. So this is discounting. If I'm looking at the pricing equation, I'll be always discounting from this. Uh, this is K here, it's uh, K minus one. We'll be discounting from the payment date uh, for, uh, until today's date. So we'll be discounting from TK to, to today to time T. And this is what you can actually see here in this uh, uh, European call option uh, or caplet. Um, in these derivations, I'm not going to use so much of uh, put options. I'm going to fo focus on the uh, call options. Uh, put option or floorlet will be given as a ec homework exercise. Um, so what we do next? So we use this. We have this payment at time TK. We discount with uh, money savings account. 
of course, first step, what we have to do, we have to change the measure from the T forward measure, uh, from the risk neutral measure to T forward measure. Then we end up with this, the following expression for pricing. Okay, so once we have this expression, so this is our pricing equation, what we can also say, because we know that our LIBOR rate, so this is actually for the floor uh, our LIBOR rate is given as the, uh, at this point, we don't need to make an assumption that this model, or there is a short rate model or any type of model for the interest rate, we can directly uh, discuss or assume the dynamics for the LIBOR rate, uh, since especially that we know that the uh, LIBOR rate under this measure is a martingale. So classical approach is to choose, okay, so if we know that the LIBOR rate is simply a martingale under this measure, we can uh, con choose a dynamics, a driftless dynamics for this process under this measure. So this is what we do here. We choose the LIBOR. Of course, remember that this is only one index which is important here, T. The other two, TK minus one and TK, those are the specific uh, indices for the rate. So it's not so much relevant. It's only important once you're looking at the particular volatility or you want to distinguish different LIBOR rates. But what you're running, the running time is time T. So we have a DL equals to sigma K, uh, and then we have a LIBOR L, and then we have a DWK. So this is the, in this way we can impose it. And if you do that, then the solution of this uh, expectation is the same as we have in so-called Black's model. So we have Black-Scholes model that we have seen it already in the course of computational finance. If we look at the interest rates and also change of measures, then we talk uh, Black's 76, that's the, that's the year it was developed. Uh, and then this is the expression is basically uh, literally is the same as we have seen it for black scholes case except that this is handled for the uh, measured changed uh, process for interest rates um, okay so in this way you can do it right so you can uh, price your couplet uh, there is few problems with this representation first problem is that okay since we have assumed a log normal distribution for the LIBOR rate. Uh, this means that the LIBOR rate cannot be negative, and we already know it can be negative. So that's the first problem that <clears throat> you may need to address. And the second problem is related to the um, case where suppose you are interested in pricing of an exotic derivative, which will depend on the LIBORs and there'll be some callability features, etc. So as if you are using Black Scholes model calibrated to this particular couplet for pricing this exotic, this is fine. But typically, you'll be using couplets only to get to find out parameters of your model, and then you would calibrate this uh, model to your couplets, and those parameters that you will take from the calibration, you would use to price some of exotics. This is exactly what we have done in the case of European type options in the course of computational finance. We have an advanced model, let's say Heston or other model, we have some unknown parameters. We use European type of options to calibrate that model to the market data using those European options. And then we use those parameters, calibrated parameters, to price some exotic derivative we don't see in the market. Because if we see a model already priced in the market for couplet, there is no point of using even this model. We can just buy it or sell it, right? So that's basically the, the whole idea. So uh, here it is essentially, let's say, in a, a market models that we will discuss later in this course. And this will be indeed relevant because in this case, we would have a different LIBORs under different measures. And then we, by putting them together, we can build up a large model called LIBOR market model, where each of those LIBORs will have individual measure, and then we can use it as a whole for pricing of some um, exotic derivatives. Uh, however, if you have a short rate model, this kind of calibration, this kind of pricing is not really useful because this pricing here using Black's model does not really have any sensitivity to your model parameters. So in a full white model, we have this mean reversion, we have eta, but those parameters are completely not present in this equation. So if you have a whole white model, you cannot really use uh, this kind of projection on log normal to calibrate your uh, full white model. So that's kind of uh, uh, something to keep in mind in the terms of uh, pricing of those uh, derivatives. And maybe uh, one more statement. Uh, you can also use those couplets and floorlets so for something more exotic, and that's basically called caps and floors. Couplet caps and floors are just defined as summations of individual uh, couplets and floorlets. So you see it's a, essentially just a linear combination of different floorlets. 
And what is important is that uh, an interest rate cap is designed to provide insurance for a holder with a loan on the floating rate. So this is basically if you have a loan on the floating rate, you may you want to buy a couple or cap, and those couplets, individual couplets, should correspond to your let's say monthly or quarterly payments. And this kind of derivative will be used as the hedge against the loan and the risk that you have on your float rate. Um, and then, like I just mentioned, a cap can be decomposed in the sum of a number of uh, basic contracts, which are uh, couplets. Of course, instead of uh, assuming log normal distribution uh, for couplet or for the interest rate for the LIBOR rate to use for pricing of couplets, we already know that this is a bit problematic because if we would have a negative interest rate, then log normal distribution is not really of use. For that reason, you would need to impose some kind of shift parameter to shift the, the, the distribution to the negative side. The process of shifting and a, a concept of uh, also implied volatilities for couplets, etc., will be discussed in uh, follow-up uh, lectures. And now let's take a look at the pricing of, uh, uh, of a couplet uh, using uh, underlying model, which will be whole white. So this is uh, related to what we have seen before already on the pricing of a an option on zero coupon bond. So by definition, of course, we have this uh, pricing equation under the change measure. I think we already have seen this equation multiple times today, so I hope by now everyone is familiar with it. We have this European type option with uh, under TK forward measure. And what we do now, we will substitute the definition of a, a LIBOR rate in terms of, we will express in terms of zero coupon bonds. But because this LIBOR rate, let's take a look here, because this LIBOR rate is defined as a L, here we have a TK minus one, TK minus one, TK. Uh, this representation, which is L, uh, this will only, this will indicate us that, um, that this LIBOR is only sensitive to zero coupon bond P, T, K, minus one, T, K. So this LIBOR will be only depending on this bond because the bond which is from TK minus one until time TK, the maturity TK, will be equal to one. So we have only this zero coupon bond. And that zero coupon bond, you can see if you substitute the definition for the LIBOR rate into the equation, you will see that you have this one over approval period. We have one over zero coupon bond minus one, Okay. And what we can do now, we can reorder the terms that we have in this uh, uh, in a maximum. So we see that there is will be, a, um, of course, there will be one here. Yes, we have one. We have a approval period. Uh, you see that basically this one doesn't have accruing period because we also multiply this, uh, with this accruing outside. So we take this accruing inside. It cancels out then we need to have additional one here. So this is the, the new uh, option pricing. So after the simplification, we end up with this equation. Uh, again, this uh, a r, it is a constant function. It's a function just of time, so it's deterministic. We can uh, take it outside of this expectation. And then we have uh, uh, this uh, notional times this function a. Of course, we also have this discounting, which I put on the other side uh, because this equation is just becoming too long. And then we have expectation under the TK forward measure. And then what we end up with is again, pricing of a zero coupon bond. So we see that we started with a pricing of a couplet. And after simplification, after substitutions of a definition of a LIBOR rate, we arrived at a pricing of a basically a call option on a zero coupon bond uh, with maturity, of course, this will be a uh, this bond is observed at time TK minus one, but this is under TK measure. And this is something we already have derived before, so we can exactly reuse the code for uh, pricing of a couplet. And only one thing is that important that the, the strike that we have right now, it is slightly different than what we have before, because we have transferred this uh, minus one into one, put them basically together. It's a new K hat, and this is expressed here, of course, be some adjustment for this uh, function a that has to be taken outside of the expectation and this is why we have this additional term so this is one way of deriving it there is also another way uh, that is presented in the book on the page 300 
81. And that's a very nice expression using a uh, tower property of expectation. So that's maybe a bit more elegant. Uh, but I have chosen this particular way because this is nicely corresponds to what we have seen so far in this lecture. So this is, I want to have it consistent. Uh, now let's take a look at the pricing. It will be a very short uh, presentation of the pricing code because many of those functions we already have seen today. Um, I'm not going through the details. I have very simplified yield curve now for illustration purposes. And then we have uh, basically pricing of a call put price. So it's, uh, uh, this is the, the something we have already seen before. So this is option on a zero coupon bond. And here we have a pricing of a couplet uh, for varying strike. And this pricing of a couplet, if you look into the function definition, it is just a, a pricing of a zero option on a zero coupon bond with properly uh, adjusted notional, which is also uh, adjusted in that uh, presentation, and also in our lecture, and also new strike. So this is something to keep in mind, that in the pricing of a um, couplet, you need to adjust all, not only notional, but not only strike, but also notional, which is uh, uh, also important. And after the presentation, after this um, substitutions and after running this code, this is exactly what the price we have. Of course, this price, maybe we can, we can conclude something about those uh, um, expressions here. We see that there is a perfect match between Monte Carlo and theoretical part for uh, pricing options on zero coupon bonds. We see zero coupon bonds also yield curve versus Monte Carlo paths. Um, and now here we have an option pricing for call option on a couplet. Uh, it doesn't really maybe tell us uh, what kind of interpretation we can have it from here. Uh, the interpretation and the relation between, let's say, um, market model parameters like mean reversion or the volatility, those will be discussed in follow-up lecture where we will concentrate on pricing of swaps. Then we will talk about volatilities. We also discuss uh, what is the impact of model parameters like mean reversion. So we have those two parameters, mean reversion and volatility, on the shape of implied volatility surface. Because as you have seen, by using of AJM framework, those two parameters are basically um, not used anyway, right? Because we are uh, implying yield curve directly um, by the term structure model. So yield curve is always fully recovered. And those two parameters are fully chosen. But in practice, you would use those parameters to calibrate to the couplet prices. And that, let's say, important, that's an important element. But also another important element is that in the interest rate world, as in equities, as we have discussed already for in the computational finance course, uh, there are implied volatility shapes. So there could be an implied volatility smile or skew, and those two parameters can be used to calibrate to those effects. Uh, unfortunately, once we talk about the whole white model, um, the impact of these two parameters is rather limited. I think I already mentioned before that full white model cannot generate any uh, smile. We can only control to some extent some skew effect. So if you look at the implied volatility, and of course this is not in this graph, this will be discussed next time, uh, then we can look at the implied volatility skew, but never uh, on the implied volatility smile under the, under the whole white model. Now it's a time to summarize what we have learned today uh, in today's lecture. Uh, today's lecture consists of two blocks. The first block covers the, these four uh, topics, and the second block is here with the rest, with the remaining. In the first part, we concentrated on uh, simple interest rate products. Uh, although maybe they are very simple, however, they are very important and they constitute majority of the products available in the market. So products like a simple uh, compounded forward rate, this was an introduction to the defining of a forward LIBOR rate, which is later used in the forward rate agreements, floating rate nodes, and interest rate swaps. So those are very important ingredients uh, for also not only in the market, but also those are important products that we are going to use later in this course uh, in the context of pricing of mortgages, swaptions, etc. Uh, here, the, the biggest, the most important takeaway should be that if you like to price those so-called linear products, linear in because they don't depend on, uh, uh, they are, let's say, linear in a tradable assets. Uh, to price those products, we only need a yield curve. So you see those products constitute the majority of the market products. And to price them, you don't need any volatility. You can just, just use yield curve to price them. This is why the construction of the yield curve is so much important. Uh, in the second part of this lecture, 
we focus more on the volatilities and pricing of some simple options. Uh, everything was in a context of whole white model, but I also have shown you how to price uh, couplets uh, using assumption, log normal assumptions regarding the rate. Uh, in the, um, in the, before we move to the couplets and florets, there was an intermediate step, how to price an option on a zero coupon bond. So this was a European type options. And then those, this knowledge was used to price uh, couplets and florets under the whole white uh, model. Uh, maybe the also very important part is that at this point we concentrate, concentrated only on European type of payoffs. This means that we have one expiry date of an option uh, and more exotic derivatives where there are uh, uh, payoff is uh, time dependent and also the path dependent. Those will be discussed not in this course, but in a follow up course. But this is also on itself. It deserves uh, quite some attention. Um, and now is the time also for the for the homework. For today, I have prepared two exercises. Um, unfortunately, those exercises are not included in the solutions on the website. However, you'll be able to verify yourself whether the uh, result you have obtained is correct or not. In the first exercise, um, the objective is to uh, price a floorlet. So in the slides we discussed, and on purpose, I have focused only on the couplets. Floorlet is the exercise for home. So again, as we have done before, we change measure to the T forward measure, and we have to perform analytical valuation and compare against Monte Carlo results. Uh, in the second exercise, so uh, maybe you remember, we have considered a case where we can price European uh, option on a uh, on the interest rate, a call option, which is a couplet. We can do it also using the Scholes equation, assuming log normal distribution for the uh, LIBOR rate. Um, the task here is to introduce a shift parameter, so the zeta, uh, which will allow us also to move the distribution uh, to the negative side. In this way, we'll be able to also price rates with uh, um, options where the underlying could be negative. So the task here is to derive the Black-Scholes formula, or it's actually Black's formula for this uh, new variant where we talk about uh, shifted log normal distribution and compare the prices obtained from uh, uh, Black Black's equation and with your numerical results where you introduce the shift to the log normal uh, stochastic differential equation. So you have to find stochastic differential equation for this particular process, and then you have to compare the results for Black's formula. And of course, this is, has to be done in the context of pricing of a, a, a couplet or floor. So this is what your choice is. Uh, good luck and see you next time.